187,335. That is the amount of wish lists Manorlord has racked up over the last two years, the seventh most followed game on Steam, created and started by just one person. But how did this come to be? What was it that really caught the eye of some of gaming's most hyped fan bases, and what controversies have held it back during its development? Let's find out in Manorlord's timeline of a masterpiece. June the 5th, 2020, the first tweets released. Real-time strategy game for PC that combines deep, organic, realistic city building with large-scale tactical battles. It was really nothing at first, but with the art to fit, it was clear that we'd be getting a look at some sort of new medieval world, perhaps along the lines of a Kingdom Come Deliverance, right? No, we were very, very wrong. Many people were intrigued initially by the unique nature of the title, but there was one bigger question. Who was behind all of this? Slavic Magic showed themselves to be in one of the most unusual of positions, a solo developer driven by the need to create something that people hadn't yet experienced. It's just banished, right? It's, a, it's another banished clone. How dare you, good sir. This is way more than that. Sure, it's got medieval city building, we can do that, but it's got in-depth, intricate details, path building like no other, growing characters and colonies of people that trade and build with each other, exploring a vast open world. But what about battles? What about big, big battles, real-time battles, Total War-style RTS battles with complex maneuvers, troop variety and real consequences? Yeah, actually... You're right, that, that actually sounds a bit better than what we had in Banish. It sounds somewhat too good to be true, right? Well, rest assured, because Slavic Magic said even themselves that <laughs> it's a real game, all right. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't imagine having to assure people that your game's real because it looks so good. Yet one thing that gets people on the case is the fact that this is a one-man team, a passion project from an individual to bring it to life to be way beyond anything that has come before. The first few sightings and reveals came with some slight gifts, videos and animations. Nothing much, but it really started to gain some traction. On the 6th of June, we saw our first sneak peek at battles. More in-depth, intricate details of buildings and colony survival. We then started to see more of the back end of the game, if you pardon the pun. The tech trees, the upgrade path to move through and advance during gameplay, the implementation of cavalry, soldiers and amazing freeform building that we've now come to know and love from this title. But it was always coming. There was always going to be the day that we got our first real look. And that's when the full announcement came on the 4th of July 2020. Manor Lords announcement trailer. And oh boy did it set the community on fire. Gorgeous road building mechanics, insane graphics and lighting, full diplomacy systems and the promise of large scale battles with RTS mechanics within. But it wasn't just the trailer itself that gained traction. Everybody online was talking about this being the next big thing. The title to take that crown from Total War, a franchise that people admittedly felt was currently lacking at least in the historical department. Was this the successor to finally fill that hole that was left? Showcasing manors with customizable retinue troops to add your own banners and colors, archery ranges, barracks to train up peasants into soldiers, hunting, mining, farming, and growing as a town, dynamic weather simulations. Every YouTuber in the space was commenting on this video or making up their own follow ups, trying to get as much information out as humanly possible. Okay, look, I know I am probably the most guilty of this. Yet with the hype came another side to the same coin as controversy for Manolods started to ramp up. Insane graphics, next level animation, and only made by one guy. Slavic magic here seems to be moving a little sus. It wasn't just us that saw the rise of a new title and the hype that came with it, but other companies did as well. Game developers wondering, how did this guy, one solo dev, get all the limelight? Introducing Viking City Builder. Pillage, set on fire, and settle a new village on the ashes of Europeans. <laughs> That's actually what it says on the stage. 
set on fire and set a new village on the ashes of European. Sorry, I just copied and pasted off the Steam page. I haven't even, I didn't even read that. Set a new village on the ashes of Europeans. What does this even mean? Viking City Builder is a classic city building game with real time strategy elements that allow players to live through historic expansions of the Viking Age. Beautiful graphics, incredible animations, massive scale with a balance between building our own Viking town and going to war and what's more, it's only made by one guy. Oh my word, even look at those road building mechanics. Oh god, it's not real is it? It's, this, this looks very scammy. Soon after the hype for Battle Lords, your best mates over at Playway Games did what they always seem to do. They hired a solo developer, made an identical trailer that is clearly pre-rendered and not actual gameplay, and then just plain ripped off Manor Lords. For some reason, they thought the only thing that actually made the community hyped was the concept and not the actual execution. <laughs> the difference here, Viking City Builder was announced years ago, and not a single piece of gameplay has come out. I've been following it behind the scenes and still. Just stock animations, pre-rendered footage, masqueraded as gameplay. The person that runs their Discord and Twitter still constantly pushing for wishlists on their Steam, yet there's no actual proof that this game is playable. At least yet. After my first video that I made calling out Viking City Builder for being a plain rip-off and copy of Manor Lords, the guys over at Playway Games, the publishers, actually got in contact. They weren't too happy with me, as you can imagine, getting a bit grumpy. After a long conversation with the head of Playway Games, they promised me that Viking City Builder and its trailer would be changed. They would completely revamp the announcement trailer so it wasn't a complete ripoff of Manor Lords, and they said they'd do it in 60 days. Well, it's almost been two years since that email, and the trailer is still up and still just a scene for scene knockoff of Manor Lords. In fact, the only thing that actually changed is Playway took their name off the publishing for Viking City Builder to try and hide their involvement. That's not exactly a good look, guys. But it gets worse. Oh god. It gets way worse. The bad press didn't help Manor Lords either. Slavic Magic actually told me that people were accusing his game, Manor Lords, for being the fake one after seeing Viking City Builder's trailer first. I mean, you have to be a special kind of unobservant to look at this and this side by side and come to the conclusion that the first one is the real one. <laughs> Yet the train carried on, and so did development. There was a few bumps in the road, but soon enough there was rumours that there was going to be a bit of gameplay very, very soon. Steam Next Fest was on the horizon. A chance for new indie developers to showcase up and coming titles and Manor Lords, well Manor Lords was front and centre. Along with it, a long awaited gameplay demo for the public to get their hands on. This was it, we would finally have our time to play Manor Lords, October 2022. It was the moment in the last few years had been leading up to. So did it live up to the hype? The puddles forming on the road, that is really really cool. God this looks awesome as well. And realize the detail. There, there is collision and pathfinding on roads. Windmill goes. Oh my god, dude, that is awesome. Ah! I built like a couple of higgledy piggledy windy roads. That road I just built is there now. It's cool. It's it's everything that it we expected it to be. I'm impressed. But keep going. Launching into the earliest demo, it is somewhat overall bare bones, but you get a good few hours of content out of it. I probably wouldn't expect any more, especially for a free version of the game. Things like the paths that you can place down, they form so naturally, they look so welded within the earth. Even though they are just a placeable, it seems as though they've been formed over months and months of people walking on the ground. When it rains, puddles start to form and these paths get muddy. Houses have this cool freeform building 
linking option, letting you make different sizes or link them together. This means that not every house is going to look exactly the same. You're not going to have these city skylines levels of uniformity. This is a medieval world. This is, at the start, a small village. There's not going to be some incredibly skilled craftsmen and architects like in the big cities. This is just a few builders and carpenters that are getting together to try and start something new. And this is shown in the higgledy piggledy variation of wonky fences, cool buildings that are slightly different, thatched roofs that aren't quite straight, and it's designed to perfection. But with this freeform building, you can completely customize the size. The bigger the plot, the more options that it gives you for things like adding in gardens, that people can plant their own vegetables within their house plots. Overall, it's an incredibly positive experience. And whilst I cannot wait for the diplomacy and the RTS battle side of Manalords, the city building portion, or at least the small part of it that we've been shown so far, is beyond any other game that has tried to do a similar thing in the last five years. So what's next? How did the fanbase change and what impacts have the demo actually made? Within the first day of the demo ending, Slavic Magic actually just got back to work on improving the game from feedback. Ox animation was improved, new buildings were implemented along with fixed structures like stairs to improve immersion when you're getting down and close to your settlers. The UI was adapted and evolved with fresh stylized icons. An incredible new castle planning system with full modules to adapt and customize the way your Mott and Baileys look and my is it a fancy addition. Stuff like this is actually what makes people excited for this game. The constant improvements in ways that players actually vote on themselves and have some sort of say in. Please, AAA developers, pay attention to this. There is still no official release date for the game, but with a penciled in date of just 2023. But one thing is for certain. The more and more that I follow this, it really does feel like Manlords has the timeline to be a masterpiece.